Hello and welcome to my safety switch installment in my piston series. Uh, in this installment we're going to be looking at the AND gate and its uses for making a safety switch which makes input useless unless a switch is pulled. So I'm doing this basically to act as a sort of prerequisite to my next video so that I can refer to this video and make explaining things a bit easier. So in order to introduce AND gates, I'll just build one real quick. Alright, so what we have here is two redstone torches on blocks with input coming into them. So when input arrives and powers this block, this torch will go off and then this will stay lit because this torch is also on. Therefore the only way to turn this into its default state, which is off, is to have both torches on blocks that are being powered in order to turn them both off thereby turning this torch on in its default state. So if we pull this switch here, the torch is off, but because this torch is on, this redstone wire is still powered, and this torch is no not in its default state of on. And when this torch is off as well, the redstone wire is in its default off position, and the torch is on its default on position. So when both switches are pulled, when both blocks are powered, when they are both receiving input of some kind, the output will be powered. And the great thing about these is that they don't have to be in this compact form. You can sort of extend them out a bit so that I can have power going into the block from elsewhere, such as this block here just invert the power this way and then it still has to be pulled in order to activate that torch over there and you can do that with this one as well and you can even take this power and invert it elsewhere there's a lot of customization so it doesn't actually really look like the original AND gate in the end if you spread it out far enough but still works in the same way so for this example, I'm going to show you a button that is only useful whenever one of the other input the switch is pulled. So instead of having two, uh, two switches, we're going to have a switch and a button. So I find this to be useful in adventure game making. A lot of adventure maps are becoming rather popular. They're pretty fun to play on. And one thing that's interesting is finding a switch and uh, realizing that the switch doesn't actually work. So here we have a button, and it works by pushing the block over here. And the only way this will do this is if it gets the input from the button as well as its other input, which is the switch. So let's say you're in the adventure map and you have this pressure pad of stealth, this hidden pressure pad of stealth, and you have to press the pressure pad to reveal a switch. Then you have to make sure you stand back. Maybe you can have multiple pressure pads and have them being attached to each other so that you have to stand in a certain position in order to press the switch. Like maybe you have to go around the corner like this or something. Make it a bit more difficult than simply pressing a switch so that, you know, this is in the way. Then when you flip the switch, the power goes off. And see, I have the power going from the switch into this and in here. And then it's inverted in here. This acts the same way as the front of the AND gate I showed earlier. So it's just removed from its two inputs. So this is that front of the the output of the 
gate and one of the inputs is off so all we need is to have this other input to be off in order to make sure that this is in its default position of on so we trace back our uh, our uh, power and we find that this torch is inverting the power from this button so it's always being on until the button is pressed and when you press the button it goes off and since this is off and this is off the torch will be on and will power both of these because this torch can power this one from one block over and down at a sort of angle so you get both powered with that one torch both pistons that is so now that we've flipped our switch First, I'm going to demonstrate this real quick. If the switch is flipped up, the button is completely useless. But again, you pull the switch, and just to demonstrate one more time, press the button, and you get your secret door. There's plenty of secret door videos and tutorials out there already, but this adds a little bit more spice to those, and demonstrates one of the points I'm going to be making in my future video, my next video. So I figured it'd be good to introduce it first as sort of a, just a, just an introduction in case people wanted to make something like this for an adventure map. Um, one interesting thing would be to have one of the inputs be the switch itself, a pressure plate, and the other input being a button and perhaps maybe the pressure plate would be wooden and the only way to activate the button is to put throw an item down and originally they would just stand on it they'd be like well what the hell how do I stand here and maybe the switch maybe the button is just out of your reach like you couldn't jump off and hit the switch in time before the pressure pad goes back up so you have to make a run for it so they just keep making a run for it and keep failing until eventually they realize it's impossible to do it that way and they whip an item down on the pressure pad and then press the switch I think that'd be sort of an interesting uh, puzzle for an adventure map and there are plenty of other things anything that you can power you can use for this sort of puzzle so it's a pretty interesting concept so I'll see you in, an, in the uh, next video.